Any mail for me? I'll see, Mr. Travers. Not a thing, sir. If I get a telegram or a special, have me page. charming as usual. Thank you. I'm going to be quite impertinent and ask you if... If uh, I dye my hair or is it really red? <laughs> you guessed it. Well, do you or is it? I do not and it's really red. Anything in perfumes this evening? Uh, uh, why, uh, yes, I believe so. Have you Lorigan? Yes. What size? What size would you suggest for a charming girl? Well, she'll probably take all she could get. Mm, most women will. A philosopher and a cynic. At least a cynic. That's Lorigan. Do you like it? Do you? It's alluring. I'll take it. I hope she likes it. I'm certain she will. How late do you work? Until 12. And then? I go home and go to bed. Will you go somewhere with me and have supper? Now don't let that red hair burn you up. Oh, I don't know. What's open after 12? Oh, some near beer garden. No, I mean something first class where respectable people go. You think I'm a nice girl? I don't know how nice you are, but I know how careful I am. Thank you. I'll be waiting for you in the lobby at 12. Promise not to make me walk back home? I don't enjoy that sort of thing. Oh, well, all right, I'll chance it. Something for a charming girl. Oh, thank you. I'll be waiting. sandwiches and coffee. Or would you rather have beer? No. Milk, please. Milk? Milk. Milk. <laughs> Take good care of yourself, don't you? Cigarette? No, thank you. I don't use them. Well, now that we're acquainted, what's your name? Lynn Monarch. 
Sounds like a nightclub hostess. Well, be that as it may, it's mine. <laughs> but I don't know yours. Oh, just call me Jack. But that isn't your real name, is it? Mm -hmm. Of course not. How long have you been around this town? 23 years. I was born here. Oh. Not married, are you? Mm, heavens, no. Live with your family? No, I have no family. Oh. I like you. You're... Different. That's what they all say. <laughs> Well, don't worry. I haven't any proposition. I just wanted company. Are you sure that's all? Absolutely sure. Well, that's fair enough. Where are you from? New York. Oh. I understand the hotel where you're working is going to be replaced by an office building. Yes. Guess I'll be looking for a job soon. I could find something for you to do in New York if you wanted to leave here. What would I do in New York? I'd find something for you. Well, it sounds almost like a proposal is so sudden. I don't like to make up my mind in a hurry, though. You see, I like to know what I'm doing. From what I know about women, they never know what they're doing. Am I flattered? Women are too emotional. You can't trust them. You think you know women? I know this. A woman who is loyal and can keep her mouth shut is worth a lot of money to any man. What do you mean? Maybe when we're better acquainted, I'll explain it to you. Portland 57219. Yes. This is Courtland 57219. Yes, this is Mr. Travers' residence. May I speak to Mr. Travers, please? Does Mr. Travers know you, Miss Mullen? I see. Well, Mr. Travers is out of the city at present. No, I'm sorry. I don't know when he expects to return. Victoria Hotel? Yes, I'll tell him you called. All right. Thank you. I beg your pardon. Yes? I hope you don't think I was trying to flirt. Well, what would you call it then? You're sitting on my hat. Oh. Well, I beg your pardon. Well, it's my fault. You see, I, uh, I went to the telephone, and when I came back, well, there you were, sitting on my hat. Yes, so you said. Yes, yeah, sitting on my hat. Well, I, I'll have to be going now. Darn it all, I want to talk to someone. I'm lonesome. And that privileges you to join me? This is New York. And that helps? Well, it helps. You're a stranger, aren't you? How do you know it? Oh, I don't know. There's something about out-of-towners that's different. 
To all of Hickey Hick? Oh, heavens no. Say, look here. What? I came down from White Plains to take my wife to the theater. She walked out on me for a weekend party, and here I am, stranded. Can't trust women. Is that your philosophy, or merely an assertion for conversation? I'm quoting someone. A man, I'll bet. Yes, a man. Well, I guess we can consider ourselves acquainted. Quite as well. My name's Bob Shelton. And mine's Lynn Monnet. Is your hair... Yes, my hair is really red. And I have tickets for the vanities. What about it? Did I say I was lonesome? Now, don't tell me you have a date. Should I or shouldn't I? Please say yes. All right. Suppose someone saw us and told your wife. You flatter me. She wouldn't care. Can I depend on that? Absolutely. All right. We see the vanity. I'll go upstairs and change, and I won't be long. Great. Yes, this is Miss Monnet. All right. Miss Monnet. Thanks. Hello there. How are you? I'm sorry I wasn't here when you phoned. I've been out to Chicago on business. Well, where are you? Oh. <laughs> well, that's rather an expensive hotel, young lady. Well, for a poor working girl who hasn't worked nearly a month, it most certainly is. Oh, New York's all right, but I'd like it better if I had a job. No, I haven't forgotten you said you'd give me something to do. Oh, splendid. What time? Just a moment. Joe. Is there anything on for this evening that I can't sidestep? Harry said Morgan was around several times. Morgan, eh? Well, I'll drift down to the Silver Moon about midnight. Tell Harry. Hello. We'll have dinner here at my apartment. That is, if you're not afraid. Afraid of what? You? Oh, heavens, no. Well, then I'll expect the car at 7.30? Yes, it's room 501. Yes. All right. Goodbye. Hello there. How are you? Well, you're even better looking than I thought you were. It's easy for you to say nice things, isn't it? If I mean them. Gee, this is a swell place. I'm glad you like it. Cocktail? Believe it or not, I don't use them. You don't smoke, you don't drink. What do you do? Eat, sleep, and work. <laughs> well, that's not a bad routine. Sure you won't have one? Quite certain. Well, I'll say one thing. You know you're mine. Well, don't forget my red hair. I didn't. I haven't. And I won't. How long did you say you'd been in town? Nearly a month. You know, you promised me a job. And if you're handing them out, you're the only one in New York who is. What's the matter, Broke? Flat. So you want a job, eh? Well, if you've changed your mind, I can get one someplace else. Don't be silly. I'm not. Red-headed spunk, eh? There are thousands of pretty girls in this town looking for jobs. They end up on the streets. Or in the morgue. 
Well, the morgue may get me, but not the street. You've never been really hungry. When you get really hungry, you'll do almost anything. And speaking of hunger, there's dinner. We eat. Well, how do you feel now? Oh, like a new person. A full stomach certainly alters one's outlook on life. Rather. All right, Lynn. You're working for me. Do you mean it? I never say things I don't mean. You'll find that out. Well, what am I to do? First thing you're to do is to move into an apartment. I've selected one this afternoon on 87th Street. Yes? I'll take care of the rent. Also, any reasonable expense for clothes. You're always to be well-dressed. I see. I'll pay you uh, $100 a week. Well, what on earth can I do to earn all that money? Nothing very exciting, nothing very hard. But you'll be subject to my call night or day. Well, that requires an explanation. There's nothing to explain, nothing to be afraid of. I'm handling a deal which necessitates my being seen at times with an attractive girl who looks well-bred. You look it. Thanks. You have brains. I must have a girl with brains. And most important of all, you've got to keep your mouth shut. Meaning? Just exactly that. When you can't remember anything else, don't talk. Oh, I learned to keep my mouth shut a long time ago. I assure you that everything is all right and nothing will happen to you. Is it a bargain? Yes. Here's six hundred dollars. Five for clothes and dance. Joe. Well, oh, I've never had so much money before in all my... <laughs> you probably have a lot more if you do as I tell you. Tell Al to bring the car around. Miss Monica is leaving. Al has the key to your apartment and will help you if you need him. I'll see you at 10 o'clock tomorrow night. 10 o'clock. Is that all you have to say? Well, you told me to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> you win. Say, who's the redhead with travelers? I've never seen her before. I've got something very important I want to tell him. Right. Hello, Travers. Hello, Morgan. Sit down. Miss Lee. This is Mr. Travis, B. How do you do? I've heard about you. This is Mrs. Travis. How do you do? Oh, so you're going to try it again, eh? After that last sellout. Meet Mrs. Travis. How do you like the silver moon, Mrs. Travis? She loves it. She raves about it. You've got things pretty well sewed up in this part of town. Mm-hmm. They're going to stay that way, too. Maybe you're right, but I wouldn't be too sure. Come up to my place. I'm doing real well and spreading out a bit. You'd be in a good spot if you'd stay up there. <laughs> Maybe I'm ambitious, like you. Really? Yeah. This is quite a place. Yes. Quite a place. But you can never tell when a storm will come up. No. But I'm always prepared. Well, B, let's toddle along. Goodbye, dearie. 
You've got a great line of conversation. Good night, Mrs. Travers. I thought you didn't smoke. I don't. You'll do. Right, Dad? All right. You certainly know how to keep your mouth shut. Did I overdo it? No. It's been interesting. Rather. It's getting a bit stuffy in here, Mr. Travis. Wouldn't you rather have dinner in the private dining room? That's a good idea. What do you say? This way, please. Morgan just left. Is my car waiting? In the alley. Good. And now, Lynn, lesson number two. I'm going to leave you alone for exactly three minutes. In just ten minutes, supper will be served. After the waiter has left the room, close and lock the door. Then arrange the table as though we'd been eating. If anyone should happen to drop in, I've just stepped out the telephone. Understand? And then that, keep my mouth shut. Right. Hello, Chief. Is Travers here? In a private dining room with a redhead. A redhead, eh? Yeah. Let's have a look. <laughs> oh, Harry. Is Travers here? Travers expecting you? I don't know whether he's expecting me or not, but I want to see him, and in the flesh. Mr. Travers. Mr. Travers. Here, here. Come on out, Travers. I owe the pleasure of this visit. <laughs> a pineapple. A pineapple? I suppose you don't know anything about it. I haven't the slightest idea what you're talking about. No? I've been here all evening. Have you been here all evening? Yes. Mr. Travers and I have been here since 10.30. Dear me, I present my old friend, Mr. Regan. Mrs. Travers. Oh, Mrs. Travers. How do you do? How do you do? And now, gentlemen, may we be excused? Why, yes, of course. Whoever planted that pineapple certainly didn't do Morgan's place any good. No? Yes. Well, I'm happy to have met you, Mrs. Uh, Travers.
Any questions? Yes. What's the pineapple? A fruit. It grows in Hawaii. Oh. I'm as usual to be the dumb Mrs. Travers. <laughs> Posing as my wife has been rather embarrassing to you, hasn't it? Well, you are paying me a salary. Oh, I'm sorry you feel that way about it. Oh, I'm getting used to it. You like it? Well, do you? Why don't you answer? You told me when I couldn't think of anything else to say, to keep my mouth shut. <laughs> well, that's encouraging. Our host knows the Travers peculiarities about separate rooms. Yes. And everybody thinks I'm crazy. Well, maybe I am. Oh, I don't think so. Good night. Travis smokes only the best. Hear that? Ride in a motorboat. Different, don't you think? Neat. for its hook, line, and sinker. What a sucker that Morgan is. It worked, eh? His love for antiques. We'll make an antique out of him. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll get down there. He'll be there at eight. Wait a minute. There's to be no slip up on this. I'll go myself. Wait a minute, boss. We can. I'll go myself. Okay. How about a drink? All right. Have the car ready. I'll be right down. All right. Final rate, 3527. Hello, Lynn. Oh, hello, dear. Yes, I'm ready. Oh. We're not going? No, we're going to the theater instead. Don't rest. I'll call for you in 20 minutes. They'll be ready. Oh, all right, dear. I'll hurry. Goodbye.
Yeah. You think this is 4th of July? What do you see, officer? The motor was clogged up and, and I was trying to fix it. Well, cut it out. I'll give you a ticket. Okay. Fred, what happened? Shut up. Police! 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 The man's been killed! Please! together. It's either Morgan's life or mine. He'll get a wire from me in the morning from, from Cleveland. I've been there since Sunday night. Here. Ditch that when you get away from the... And remember, keep your mouth shut. Goodbye. Just a minute, young lady. We want to talk to you. Who are you? Oh, I remember. Come in, Cocker. Come in. And take your hat off. I've seen you before, haven't I? At the Silver Moon. Are you Mrs. Travers? No. I'm not Mrs. Travis. Thank you. You were his girl, eh? I was. Were you out with him last night? No. Morgan was knocked off last night, and we think that Travers knows who did the job. Where were you last night? Here. Oh, here? I didn't go out all evening. Where is Travers? He's in Cleveland. <laughs> He's in Cleveland. <laughs> I'm laughing myself to death. You don't look like the sort of a girl that would be mixed up with a man in Travers' business. I didn't know the business he was in until I read the newspapers this morning. How long have you been with Travers? Just a few months. I've been drawing a salary. <laughs> a red-haired alibi. <laughs> you don't look dumb. Did Travers ever ask you to carry a gun? Ever shove a gun in your hand and ask you to duck with it and then chuck it? No. Why don't you go through a thing? Oh, shut up. Travers isn't leaving any tracks. And you couldn't make this girl talk even if you third degreed it. Okay. You don't look like a bad girl. I'm not. He was going to marry you? Sure. He was going to marry me. And you didn't know he was a big shot? No, uh, you see, I knew he had power, and I, I thought he was on the level. I, oh, 
I don't know what I thought. He was just leading you on, and you didn't get wise to his line, eh? Perhaps. Were you planning on sticking around until the fireworks popped? Until I read the paper, I didn't know what I'd let myself in for. I might have guessed what Travers was if I'd have tried very hard, but... You see, I... I loved him. Well, I... I haven't been very bright, I guess, and... Perhaps I didn't want to know. Anyway... I made a mess of things, and I'm... I'm gonna walk out on him. Are you gonna stop me? Does Travers know you're leaving? No, he's in Cleveland. <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> now listen, I'm being kind to you, and I'll give it to you straight. Land, and do it before Morgan's outfit goes into action. <laughs> you know, taxes are high, and it costs a lot of money to keep up the morgue. <laughs> well, so long, young lady. And pick a tip from an old copper who's seen a lot of pretty girls will slap. Pick yourself out a nice little eight and lay. Thanks. Okay, Cochran. Okay. It is very difficult to find a position for anyone without reference to this moment. Well, I explained that they were lost with my baby. I'm sorry, but I can't do anything for you. You mentioned a job as a nurse, and I love children. No, uh, I don't think so. My client is hard to please, and very particular. Any luck today, Mrs. Johnson? No, Mr. Sheldon. Aren't you going to speak to me, Mr. Sheldon? All right. Lynn, for goodness sake, Lynn Monmouth, how are you? Fine. Well, I'm sick to death in New York and looking for a job in White Plains. Is that right? Yes. May we talk in here, Miss Johnson? Well, it's six minutes, so. Thank you. Sit down. You know, I've thought of you more than once since the night we went to the vanity. Oh, the roses you sent me were lovely. I'm glad you liked them. Did you tell your wife you took me? No. She never came back. Oh, I'm sorry. Things often turn out that way. You're a strange girl. Why? Oh, I don't know. You impress me as being quite sophisticated, and at the same time, rather naive. Well, I suppose I'm a little of both. Life mixes up the two after I've waited through it a few years. That's right, it does. I want my daughter to grow up with the knowledge that everything in life isn't superficial. How old is she? Nearly four years old now. Were you serious about wanting a job? Oh, I'd love to take care of a little girl. You would? Yes. When can you start? Right now. Fine. Lovely. You like it? Wait a minute. Margaret! Margaret, bring Gloria down. Yes, sir. Hello, Daddy. Hello, honey. Any good girl today? Big surprise for you. Now, Gloria, this lady's come to take care of you. I do. How do you do? Is she going to be my new mama? Well, no, no. What's your name? Lynn. Lynn what? Mama. Are you going to stay here? Yes. Well, why don't you take off your hat? <laughs> now, does that suit you better? Yeah. Oh, she's a little doll. Well, you're going to get along. Why don't you come up? Doesn't seem like toy. Oh, I'd love to. Good night, darling. 
And when you go to bed and be a real good girl. Yeah. You won't go away and leave me, will you, Lamb? Oh, no, darling, I won't. And you say it to my big girl. Oh, yes, precious, I will, dear. Now give me a good kiss. Oh, sweet, now what is it? Lynn, are you happy here? Yes. You'll never know how happy I am. I'm glad. I don't know what we'd do without you. Well, that's sweet of you to say that. I mean it. Gloria loves you, Lynn. And so do I. Will you marry me? You don't know anything about me. I don't want. I love you. You realize this is the first time you've been to New York since we've been married? It is, isn't it? New York. I don't like it. It's like some great machine, grinding, grinding. Oh, it, it frightens me. I hate to leave home, even for an hour, even to take you to the station. It's so quiet and peaceful here. You love our home, don't you? Wouldn't you? If it was the first real home you'd ever known? You bet I would. Well, come on. You wait here for Mrs. Shelton. expect him to come through. He's pretty tough. Go on. Hey, you hurry home and don't forget to promise Gloria a nice present. Oh, as if I could. Bork. Bye.
that limousine. All right, Barton. Yes. What do you want? Can we talk here? What do you want? Can we talk here? Yes. Well, all right. Now listen, I'm in a jam and you've got to help me. How did you find me? Saw you at the station in Trailser. New York is a small place. Well, what is it you want? I've got to get out of the country. My life isn't worth a nickel. I'm broke. And you're going to lend me $10,000. Well, where on earth can I get it? <laughs> you married a rich man, didn't you? You're a smart girl. Get it from him. I can't ask him. Now listen. I'm cornered. You've got to help me. I'll meet you at 8.30 at Peacock Inn. I can't. You're going to. I'll be in a private room on the north side. Come through the windows off the veranda and you won't be seen. No, I won't. Now listen. This is a good time for you to do some fast thinking and keep your mouth shut. You always were a clam. Well, be one now. Come through for me or I'll... You mean you tell my husband... Just try me. Hello, Mommy. Hello, darling. Where's my present? Well, I'm going to get it tomorrow, dear. All right. You're more beautiful than ever. Take off your coat. I want to look at you. No, I, I can't say. You're going to do as I say. I can't have the way to see me. I've been here before with my husband. <laughs> that door is locked. You step out that window onto the veranda if anyone comes. Come here. Take off the coat. No, I'd better leave it on if I'm going to step outside. Oh, well, all right. I have the orders, sir. I'm not quite ready yet. Come back in a few minutes. Very good. Lynn, he's gone. Well, where's the money? 
I didn't bring it. What? I couldn't. My husband is, is out of town. And besides, I... I won't ask. Now listen. You're a smart girl. Why let a little thing like a husband stand in the way? I've told you I can't. You can't, eh? You mean you won't? Yes. Why, you little fool. Did it ever occur to you that the police might be interested in finding a certain red-haired girl known as Mrs. Robert Shelton, who handled the gun that killed Morgan? Oh, no. No, you wouldn't do that. I wouldn't, eh? All right, then. You're going to get me that money. I can't. Give me police headquarters. What are you going to do? Tell the police where they can find a certain red-haired girl. Hello, police headquarters. Let me talk to the captain of detectives. Who was it? Okay. Peacock Jim. There's something wrong, all right. We better investigate. Okay. trouble here. Well, I skidded and stole my motor. Uh, not out of gas, are you? No, I used the choke so much that I was part of the carburetor, I guess. Well, turn off your switch and close your throttle. Then step on your starter. Now turn on your switch and open your throttle. Maybe that'll help you. Well, I've been trying that for the last ten minutes. Well, come on, do something. I'm in a hurry. Get out of here. <laughs> come on, start it up. That's it. Come on, then. Bring that car on there. Come on, bring that car A shot, eh? Look at this. Oh, I only thought the door. Good thing we came down. Sure. <laughs> what are those doors open onto? A small terrace. You see, in summertime, we have the flowers and light. Oh, never mind the decoration. Is that the back of the house? Yes. He asked me for a private dining room on the north side, the back of the house, with a window which opens onto the, uh, the balcony. What's his name? Uh, Smith. Uh, Mr. John Smith. Well, well, our old friend Mr. John Smith, eh? Uh-huh. You ever see Mr. Smith before? No. Excuse me, but somewhere, someplace in New York, I have seen that man. Oh, I see, in New York. Yes, sir. Well, that helps. Only a few people live in New York. Well, let's have a look at him. Oh, this is terrible, terrible. Travis. So it is. Friend Travis, parading is John Smith. Ken Travis! What do you Ken? You don't mean me, Ken Travis? Yeah. Oh, this will ruin me. It will ruin me. Who else is in the room? But the time I came in, he was alone. The door was locked. I knocked and he let me in. Did you hear any voices? Well, I... 
I listened when I came out. So, you are a snooper. Why do you listen when you're supposed not to, huh? Sometimes it is very interesting. Now you listen to me, you hardly oh, had it, Margot. Uh, what did you hear? Well, I heard a woman's voice say, Oh no, you wouldn't do that. What is he doing? Well, that, sir, I... I don't know. But just then I heard a man say, Well, how about getting me that money? And then some people came along and spoiled everything. Well, I'll notify New York here. Uh, they are looking for him. Uh, get the coroner. <laughs> this is terrible, terrible. Long distance. Never stand this. this is uh, Captain Kent speaking. They got him, eh? Morgan's gang put Travers on the spot. Okay, I'll be there in about an hour. A dame? <laughs> There usually is. <laughs> I'm going to White Plains, McCarthy. I'll see you in the morning. Hello, Kurt. Hello, Regan. Thanks very much for your cooperation in that Brannigan case. Always like to do what I can to help. The coroner removed the body. But you said there was a woman mixed up in this. What is she? That's what I'd like to know. Well, didn't anybody see her or get a description of her? Your waiter served me right here. Did you see the woman when you served them? Well, sir, I think that she must have stepped out on the terrace when I came in the door. Oh, and you didn't get a good look at her, eh? No, sir. But he heard her voice. What's she say? She said, oh, no, no, you wouldn't do that. Do what? Well, that, sir, I do not know. But then, then the man said, well, how about giving me that money? Oh, now calm yourself. Don't get excited. Well, I can't help it sometimes, sir. I, I'm so emotional. I see. Yes. Well, just then some people came along and I had to leave. Oh, that's too bad. Oh, oh but I came back. And, and then I heard him calling her by some funny name. Funny name, eh? Yeah. What does it sound like? Le... Le... Lynn. Lynn. The red-haired alibi. Now that you mention it, I do remember that he said something about the police being interested in the red-haired woman that handled the gun in some murder case. But I don't remember the name. Was it Morgan? Morgan. That was it. Morgan. Morgan. You know her, Egan? Yes, that is, if it's the woman I think it is, she used to be Travers' girl. She walked out on him at the time that Morgan was killed and came up here to White Plains. Later, she married a man by the name of Shelton. She seemed to be a very nice girl, and I gave her a break. I hadn't quite cleaned up on the Morgan case at that time, and I kept track of her. You know where Shelton lives, don't you? Yes. Well, let's go up there. All right, but we better see the coroner first. Okay. Shelton, then? Well, is Mrs. Shelton expecting you, sir? No, but I think she'll see us. Tell her Mr. Kent and Mr. Regan are here, and it's very important. Yes, sir. Just a minute, sir. She's done pretty well for her. Mm, they usually do. Mr. Kent and Mr. Regan to see you, madam. What do they want? Well, Mr. Kent said it was quite important. Oh. Well, all right, I'll see them. Very good, madam. She'll see you, gentlemen. Take your coat, sir. Yes, Mr. Shelton. I am Mrs. Mr. Regan. 
Kent. You don't remember me? No. Although your voice sounds familiar. I talked to you earlier this evening uh, on Lane Road. You remember. What is it? What do you want? Hadn't you better sit down, Mrs. Shaw? Thank you. Haven't I seen you before? It's possible. I've been around New York for nearly 50 years. I think you'll remember. I remember you. Yes, I know. You know why we're here, of course. Yes. You're in a tough spot, Mrs. Shelton. I know. Do you think a person is ever justified in killing another? Well, there are a lot of people without whom the world would be better off. I'm glad to hear you say that. Why? Perhaps I can make you understand, then, why I killed Trent Travis. Anything you say may be used against you. Oh, I'm not worried about myself. About my husband and Gloria. Had I had less confidence in my ability take care of myself and keep out of trouble. I probably wouldn't have had any, any beginning with Trent Travers. Eventually I found out who he was and what he was. And then I realized what I had been. Hated myself. I hated New York. And I tried to put it all behind me and out of my mind as nearly as I could. And then I came here to White Plains and met and married Robert Shelton. Trent Cabot came back into my life today and threatened my happiness. It was to preserve it that I went to the Peacock Inn tonight. He demanded money. A loan, he called it. The sum of money I couldn't possibly get without revealing everything to my husband. That's why I killed him. Did you keep the gun or did you throw it away, Mr. Shelton? I have it. My husband. May I see it, please? Yes, I'll do it. That's all right. She'll be back. What do you think? So what do you think? As far as I'm concerned, it's a cut and dry case. Yes. out for a minute. <laughs> What's your name, darling? Gloria Shelton. Gloria Shelton. <laughs> Isn't that great? You know, I got a little niece just about her age. <laughs> yeah, that's too bad. Nice home. Nice baby. From what she says, a good husband. Thank you. Gloria, dear. Here, I'll take her. Let me hold her. You might have be arrested immediately. I'm afraid so. Why, this is a 32. What? Let me see. Well, I'll be... <laughs> you may have shot at Travers, Mrs. Shelton, but the bullet that killed him was fired from a 45 caliber gun. You see, there were a lot of people gunning for that man. The Morgan crowd, more than likely. I guess that's right. I'm sure it's right. <laughs> Are you sure that was a 45? Positive. The medical examiner has the bullet. Then I'm not going to be arrested? No. Are you satisfied, Kent? All right with me. Thank you. Thank you. 
Good night. Good night. Good night. What are you crying for? Because...